Hello and welcome back to the Sports Wilderness Episode 3. I'm Wandering Moses. Been having a conversation with my brother Aaron here about NFL games from this weekend. And when we picked up last, we were discussing Kansas City and Miami. And I'd like to move on to the next game on the AFC slate. Houston at Oakland. Houston's favored by 5. Oakland having a disappointing season at 3-11. and And... Houston is seven and seven. However, they are two and five on the road. You see Houston picking up that third road win of the season, or do you see Oakland be get, or getting their fourth win of the season? I'm gonna have to go with Oak. Um, yeah, excuse me, uh, Houston because you know um, Shab is back, and even though even though Sage did a good job, I think Shab can lead them to a good victory. And Oakland, they suck. To be quite frank, I, that's that's a brief, that's a short answer. They're bad, and I could get into my opinions about Al Davis, but that would take far too long. Yeah, that's definitely a topic for another episode. I'm sure we could probably fill in at least two or three episodes just talking about Al Davis's issues. All right, you have Buffalo and Denver. Buffalo at Denver. Denver is looking to clinch the AFC West. And they are gaining three, which is more or less as even of a game as you're going to get. You know, Denver's getting the three points that they get for being a home team. You see, Buffalo started off so well, but now they're six and eight. Denver eight and six. What's your take there? I feel really bad. I I just feel really bad for Buffalo. I know I know a guy at school that's a Buffalo fan. I was so happy for him when they were doing well, but I although I. I think Buffalo can scrap out a win. Denver is to me is not all that impressive. They're it's a very bad eight and six, considering they're in a very poor division at this point. I I think I'm gonna have to give it to Buffalo because if they can if they can scrap it out against the Jets almost without if hopefully they don't screw it up again like they did last week. I think Buffalo can do it. Yes, and the, and the final AFC game having here is. The marquee game, Pittsburgh at Tennessee. That's, that's going to be a good one. The winner most likely will end up with home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Tennessee, 12-2, and two, and Pittsburgh at 11-3. and three. Now, if Pittsburgh wins, they're not guaranteed home field advantage, but it would certainly put them in the driver's seat to being the number one seed in the AFC. What do you think? I don't like Pittsburgh, but I think... All around, for the most part, I think Pittsburgh is a better team. Even even if they have the what what is that crap that Tennessee has smash and dash or whatever that stupid stuff is, and they can run a lot, but I don't think that they can take. Well, it's the number one defense in football. I don't know about against. Obviously, they're probably number one overall against the run, so they can take the run. They can take the pass, of which they have none. Yeah, they they are the number one ranked defense, and not just that, they are a road favorite, five points. That's pretty <coughs> generous, I'd say, but yeah, I agree. I I'm surprised that Pittsburgh is favored at all in this game, uh, considering that Tennessee still it has the best record in football. All right, let's get to a couple of these um, interdivision, or excuse me, interconference games. You have, here's a game that we're certainly going to be interested in. It's San Diego at Tampa Bay. Now, in order for the Eagles to make the playoffs, either Tampa or Atlanta has to lose. And San Diego is still theoretically in the divisional race as long as Denver loses and San Diego keeps winning. You know, they could pull something here. Um, but San Diego, under you know the, the uh, wise leadership and I use that loosely, of North Turner, have had an extremely disappointing season. Well, uh, San Diego, yeah, definitely very disappointing. Uh, it, I, as someone who's through for the Eagles, I, of course, want them to make that loss at Tampa Bay. So, I, I, Tampa Bay is a good team. I just don't think they're playoff. Material certainly San Diego isn't. I I that's what I think Tampa Bay will get a scrap out a win. 
because San Diego does have all the elements for, I think, a good team. As they proved last year, they can go a pretty good distance, but I think Tampa Bay can do it. As long as Garcia's healthy, he didn't play last week, which I didn't find out until Sunday. But uh, I, if he plays and he's healthy, I think Tampa Bay can do it. Yeah, here's here's the other the other game, Atlanta at Minnesota. Minnesota is a point-and-a-half favorite, which means Vegas couldn't make up their mind as to what in the hell they wanted. But, you know, Minnesota still actually has a shot at the number two seed in the NFC, believe it or not. You know, after, you know, the Giants have been not playing as well lately, they Minnesota actually goes to the Meadowlands next weekend to play the Giants in the final week of the season. If the Giants lose to Carolina and Minnesota beats Atlanta, if Minnesota can beat the Giants, they would be the number two seed and get a first round bye. Wouldn't that be a shocker, considering that you know their quarterback situation hasn't really been all that great? I mean, Gus Farad. You know, Gus Farad is a guy I remember back in 97 ramming his head into a wall when he played for the Redskins. I mean, that's basically what his reputation has been since. Now he may be leading Minnesota to the playoffs. That is, if young Tavares Jackson doesn't upstage. I mean, we're hoping for a Minnesota Minnesota victory. But Atlanta has been getting tough lately. But she, their young quarterback has shown wisdom beyond his years. Well, what is it? You said Minnesota and Atlanta? Yeah. Well, I... I I think Atlanta, Atlanta, well, obviously another team I want a loss, but the, in talking about, you know, they did the Pro Bowl selections recently, they think that, a lot of people think that Matt Ryan got snubbed, even though I, a rookie quarterback going to the Pro Bowl probably yeah, isn't going to happen. I agree, rookies don't, rookie quarterbacks especially don't make the play, don't make the Pro Bowl. Unless they throw for 4,500 yards and 35 touchdowns, which Agreed. hasn't happened. Not to Stan Marino anyway. Um. I, uh, Minnesota is kind of weird for me because they they have a lot of except for Adrian Peterson a lot of unknowns except for Gus Farad obviously but he's older than dirt now in football years. Uh, sure. it, considering it's the year of the old quarterback, it seems a lot around the league is Kurt Warner and Kerry Collins who I don't hate anymore because he doesn't play for the Giants. Uh, I. I, I'm inclined to think that Atlanta will win. I don't know that Minnesota can be the number two seed. I don't think they can win out. I, I'm going to go with Atlanta. All right, and the final and most important football game of all for us are Philadelphia Eagles here coming to Washington to play the Redskins. I'm sorry, did I say Washington? I meant Landover at... FedEx Field. Eagles are five and a half point favorites, and they've won their last three games, which, you know, after the Baltimore game, when they lost 36 to 7, they were absolutely left for dead. And here they are. If they win out, they stand a good shot at making the playoffs. So, tell me, what's the final score prediction for the Eagles Redskins game? I don't think it'll be a blowout as much as I'd like to think so. Like I said, the Redskins aren't dead in the water. They'll put up a good fight. I'm going to give it probably 24 to 14. He says 24 to 14. I say 37-3. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Brian Westbrook will have three touchdowns. McNabb will throw for three touchdowns, two of which will go to Westbrook. And the Redskins will roll over and play dead like they have in the last few weeks. And if any of my friends are listening to this, too bad. Anyway, so that brings us to the end of part two of the third episode of the Sports Wilderness. We thank you for listening, and thanks to Aaron for being on the show. We hope to have him again sometime in the future. It was a pleasure. All right, and we look forward to having you around again. So... Goodbye and have a good one.